As I said, we're from Code Rivers. My name's Paul Shan. This is Neil Kidd. Um, we're, uh, uh, we're here today to talk about um, the last 18 months of um, uh, the changes we've made to our development practices and processes. Um, we, uh, we're we're going to basically, I'll, because we've called it um, episode two, um, because last year at Agile North we did the, uh, the initial part of our uh, adoption of Scrum and then movement onto Kanban and all the uh, Agile processes that we've changed. So uh, I'll start off by doing some background and then we'll go over um, what the last, uh, the first paper that we did, the last talk was about. Um, and then I'll go on to um, what we've done the last 18 months. Uh, this presentation um, from the last 18 months is basically a summary of a paper that we've produced for Lira, which is a, um, an Agile um, kind of department at the University of Limerick, which some of you might uh, know about. Um, so we're doing that into a, a book um, that will be published later this year. So if you want to find more details about this, we will have this published in a longer format. Um, in, uh, you should be able to get it through our website, through our developer blog. And there's all links to that on, on here. So um, if I start with uh, uh, basically the company, it's formed in 2002 um, as a, like an IT department to a, a larger finance company in the, the motor finance sector. Um, and from there, we um, start providing finance solutions and moving on to web services. So if you see finance calculations on a, a vehicle retail website anywhere, the likelihood is it's from us. Um, and we do that um, as well as insurance um, for some of the larger manufacturers. We've currently got a BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover, um, Citroen, um, and this sort of thing on our, on our books. So they, they um, provide us with the calculations how to calculate their finance. We build calculators and provide just the um, web services for them to integrate into their site or their, um, their in showroom systems, and, uh, however they like. Um, so we're a team of uh, 10 developers um, with the, the whole company is just 24 people. So we've got sales and infrastructure um, and management as well. So we do all our work um, at the moment in pair programming. Everything's paired. Um, Odd menial tasks we'll separate away from, but most of it's paired. Um, we use C Sharp. Um, everything's test driven. Um, we use continuous integration, and uh, we've got a continuous deployment process similar to what the Hook Group were talking about earlier this morning. Um, and uh, basically, we've been we've been doing that since uh, about 2007, wasn't it? Um, the, the the first time we we knew we had a problem with. Uh, uh, the way that things were done at Code Rivers, that all the uh, uh, all the work in progress, our backlog was all distributed over the place. No one knew what was coming up next. We couldn't um, organise or predict how long things would take for our customers. So we knew something had to be done. And that's what we call our, our chaotic state. So that's why our first paper was called From Chaos to Kanban via Scrum. Um, and then in 2007, um, we, we went on a Scrum course. And then we came back the next day and uh, implemented Scrum. We thought, right, we've got to take a drastic action. So we started pairing. We started doing other extreme programming practices, the continuous integration and deployment that I've talked about as well. Um, and then we tried that for, for a while. We had that for about two or three months. And then we came to Agile North in 2007 and met um, Dr. Kevin Rutherford, who some of you might know. Um, and he came as an Agile coach. And he, he was with us for 18 months. Um, and he helped us not only to be more Agile, but also to know how to evolve our processes. Um, and he's responsible for where we are today. Um, so we, we, he's not really been into the company for the last um, year or so, but from what he's taught us on how to inspect and adapt what we do, this is how we've come to make the changes that we've got to today. So um, that basically covers um, the last paper was when we adopted the Scrum, dropped it, evolved it, changed the way our board worked, changed the way our acceptance criteria worked, and, and that's all available at xp2010.codeweavers.net. Um, you get a hold of the video and the paper and all that sort of stuff. So which leads us on to um, basically episode two. So uh, this, this covers the, uh, the time period from um, February 2010 up until now. So some of the things that we talk about right at the end, um, we're actually only done this last week. Um, and we wanted to create a second paper and come to stuff like this so we can share our um, ideas and our mainly the, the the things we've faced and the things we've fixed and how we fix them with the community, but also so that you guys can ask us questions and look at what we do to make sure that we're doing it right or if you've got better ideas um, and that sort of thing. So we just want to expose what we do so that everyone can see 
um, and how it's done. So the format of the um, presentation is going to be an observation and kind of response format. So uh, I'll, I'll um, come tell you about things that we, we noticed weren't going quite well. Um, and then Neil's going to cover the sort of things that we changed, how we changed it and what we did um, when the processes or the practices that we changed. And the um, observations mainly came from retrospectives. So we'd have a regular retrospective, we still do, every Friday afternoon for an hour. And that's where most of the observations came from. Um, we occasionally have kind of crisis meetings where something's going really bad and something will come from that. Or it's just things that we, we change through, like ongoing Kaizen things where um, coming up from the, the, the Toyota's way of thinking where you're constantly improving what you're doing uh, by uh, looking at how you work and how you can make it better. So if we move on to the first observation then, um, the backlog, our backlog board, um, was it working? Um, our backlog board was basically one big pin board. It had our MMFs on there, so we had minimum multiple features. Someone spoke about that earlier today. So this was something that someone had uh, required. So this is from a, a Kanban point of view. And this is the requirements that will be pulled through the system until it goes to live. Um, so when you're working on it, it'll be on your work in progress board. But if it's not ready yet, it'll be on the backlog board. So we had a big board just full of cards. And they're all split into columns on a per application basis. Um, it it does, didn't really work. Problems we had with it, we couldn't predict, again, um, similar we were in a more chaotic state, when we'd be able to start something, or more particularly, when we'd be able to finish it as well. So um, we couldn't really uh, give clients good estimates, and we weren't, re weren't really sure whether we were charging correctly for the work we were doing. Um, so it was just difficult to see what was going on, and it just really wasn't um, fulfilling its purpose. So we decided to change it. Neil? So uh, what we did was it is uh, our managing director went on a course with uh, Mary and Tom Poppendick, uh, and they uh, slated him <laughs> and said, well, that's uh, a backlog. And uh, as Paul said, I think that, that it looked like we'd got approximately uh, two years' worth of work on it. So uh, we uh, set to work on that with a, a technique called the urgent important matrix. It's uh, a technique where you take the board and split it up into four quartiles uh, with a, an axis from uh, not important, important and uh, urgent, sorry, not urgent and uh, urgent. And then uh, we just kept uh, sticking the cards back on the board uh, of where we thought they should be. And then we went through that in, in loops. And then the things that were deemed uh, not important and not uh, urgent were just slung in the bin, which was extremely hard to do. Uh, because at first it's like, well, uh, I can't throw that away, but it's like, we must do, we must do. Uh, we did that uh, again and again until we got uh, four weeks worth of work. So uh, that works uh, for us to an extent. Uh, a problem that we did get to is that uh, external clients would then say, uh, I need this now. Uh, and we uh, had to learn to say no and say, stop and wait. Or, or uh, at times we'd say to them, uh, which thing first. Uh, so we had to uh, teach them that uh, this is a, a technique that we use now. So uh, that's what we did. Uh, this uh, improved things because we knew uh, how long things would take, uh, both uh, internally and uh, externally as well, because we've got a, a, a sales team that would say, uh, I've got uh, a client here that wants X or Y. And we'd say, like, a month's time or uh, three or four weeks' time. So that just uh, cleared it down and just uh, so we could uh, start afresh. Yeah. So <coughs> that moved us on to, we sorted out the planning the, and the customer collaboration side of things. But um, we then had problems with um, interacting with uh, the uh, development team and the customers and the, the team just seemed to be too big. Um, everyone at this time was all working on um, one product at a time. We were, we're stuck to single piece flow. So as I mentioned before with the MMFs, 
and we had one per product and we'd break that down into um, smaller tasks and the whole team of 10 would then work on that um, during the day. And now this meant that some MMS, and MMF stands for minimal marketable feature. Now they weren't minimum, um, sometimes they were marketable, there were more feature sets a lot of the time. And this was simply just to make sure we had enough work for everyone. And uh, this just didn't seem right. Um, I mean, so we thought, oh, we'll try slimming down the, uh, the MMS, but that didn't work either. So the problem was clearly with the team size being too big. Um, a lot of the time we had code conflicts, because um, much like the hook group we talked about earlier, we were always commit to our trunk. So we have one main main branch, uh, main branch, that's not right, is it? Main, uh, uh, main, main route through. So we won't use any branches or tags. Um, and there were a lot of people committing um, around the same sorts of areas. Because we're all working on, on one uh, project. We get a lot of commits, which is wasteful, a lot of time um, talking to each other, trying to figure out what had gone on, and then sometimes rewriting the code because the commit logs um, and the conflicts were too hard to resolve. So um, we, when we had problems with, with that, you'd also get to the end of an MMF, uh, and there'd be only enough work for one pair, say. So you've got f four pairs there with nothing to do. So we tried to combat that by having um, those pairs um, work on weight tasks in the slack time. So things that were slowing you down. So you look back at what slowed you down during this MMF and you go and work on it. So it'd be writing a, a deploy script, speeding up the test framework, something like that. Um, so we weren't always adding direct business value in terms of customer value, but we were adding value that made us faster um, in, in the long run. Um, but it, it wasn't always um, that much high value, not as much as adding customer value. So we, had to, we knew something had to change. So what we did was, uh split the team, which was uh, a big step for us because approximately uh, a year before we'd merged from two teams into one big team uh, because we'd got uh, uh, too many people that uh, just knew their small spot. Uh, so we'd uh, merged the teams for a year and then we stepped back, which was uh, slightly scary. But now we uh, would mix teams up on uh, and on a, uh, um, a, a feature uh, sprint as such. Uh, and where we could, we, we tried to work on uh, the separate projects because at this time uh, we'd probably got uh, three key things. So we uh, tried to do that. Uh, but we'd, we uh, still found uh, there was too much uh, slack time for us. So we were doing things and, and uh, hanging on to, to then uh, mix up teams again. Uh, so we then moved on to uh, a scrum sprint of uh, about two weeks, which meant uh, that we then uh, stir up the teams as such, which I believe is uh, a bit like the hut. Uh, so we, we, we'd not got stuck with uh, Specialists again, you see. So, uh, so that worked out for us. Yeah, kind of two changes there. Weren't we? we went from swapping at the end of an MMF and then swapping at yeah. a fixed time, so we could get as many MMFs with the same set of people, and then you'd swap. So we prevented the knowledge silos that we got rid of with the first team, but still ended up um, with being able to split the team and work uh, more concurrently.